podcast starts now. What is up, everyone around the globe? This is Stradio Lab Autumnal Earnestness Bonanza Part Two. Hello. We are here to reflect and answer your call-in questions as earnestly as humanly possible. I'm taking my chain out so that we are exactly matching. That's in nice. Black shirt and gold chain. That's really awesome. I love wow. when we match. Oh, that's so amazing. Are you wearing an I Love New York hat? I'm wearing an I Love New York hat. <laughs> Someone is feeling homesick boots. <laughs> I got it when I was at the airport, um, which is where uh, all the best shopping happens. Um, Were you just feeling so I Love New York that you needed an I Love New York hat? <laughs> kind of. I will say, you know, the I Love New York logo, it's one of those things that you think is going to get old and it never does. Well, there's something, it's like so tacky that then it's like, there comes a time in your life when you are like, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to pull it off because it is so iconic and so cheesy that you're like, it's like liking Bob Dylan or something. You're like, yeah. it's like a little on the nose. And then, but then sometimes when you can pull it off, you can really pull it off. Cause I did want to think like, I think it's so hack when people move to LA from New York and wear like a Yankees hat all the time. I'm like, uh-huh. that's never going to be my style. Uh, but I was like, I do want something to be like, you know, I'm not, I don't, I lived in New York for a pretty long time. And and what <laughs> says that more than a hat that says, I love New York that you bought at, at the, the airport. airport. Yes. Yes. So I'm having fun with it. I have a, here's my, first of all, your I Love New York head is stunning and I think it will never um, get old. Thank that you. said, my huge prediction is that we are really nearing the end of merch as fashion in a way that is, it's going to come crashing down in such a huge way. Don't you think? George, you're scaring me. No, not yours doesn't. Ca- I mean, I love New York. It transcends merch, but I just mean like. No, I mean, I know is, what you mean like merch in general. That's like it's really basically scary. the A twenty four. Like the, it's like the A twenty four merch industrial complex. Like everything, basically everything being hype beast skater wear. Yeah, that is going to be over in a matter of months. <laughs> That's so complicated because I actually like that stuff. I do too, but here's the thing. You think it's embarrassing now to looking back on skinny jeans and cardigans and man buns? Can you imagine how embarrassing it will be in 10 years to be looking at photos of grown 45-year-old men wearing head-to-toe ironic merch? (laughs) I do have this um, shirt I got at a thrift store that has like, it's like a little oversized and has dolphins all over it. And it's like kind of tie-dye, but the tie-dye is also dolphins. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's never going to (laughs) age. I was wearing it recently and I was like, what am I wearing? Like, I was like... I look like someone who like fell in the pool and had to like wear someone else's clothes um, because mine are soaking wet. Maybe that's the new TikTok fashion (laughs) trend is looking like someone who fell into the pool and has to wear someone else's clothes. Yeah. Wait, can I say something? The way the way trend language has evolved, and I don't mean language uh, of particular trends. I mean the language around trends is making me feel crazy. How so? Like the idea that. People say the demure trend. Yeah. I know we talked about this a little bit, but like, it's not a trend. It's just like, that's like, it's a thing that many people are saying, but a trend is different. A trend is a type of shoe or like a, or a, the way people wear their pants. Well, the internet is also like desperate to brand something now. They've seen that it's like successful to like claim it. Like I saw something that was like, you know, medieval core is so popular no, right now. Yeah. It's like, no, it's not. Like, I'm sorry, it's but not. no, it's not. Like, yes, you found six people who have done it, done a TikTok about making a medieval style thing. No, it's just that Chapel Roan did medieval for the VMAs. Yeah. It, it's like people are desperate to to brand in a way that is I have to say, annoying. I'm saying this I'm saying this with nothing but love because you know I feel a connection to those whose job it is to churn out content on the internet. I have been there, you have been there at every point. We all have to put in our hours. It's like your mandatory military service. Yeah. It, at, at every point, you know, every member of our generation has to have a job where their job is literally to just churn out content. Uh Slop, as they say. Yes. However, (laughs) I saw something the other day, and I did not see who wrote it, so apologies if it's someone we know. Wow. I saw something the other day that was about how, like, the cowboy aesthetic is in, and I was like, excuse me, 
we are not doing this again. We're <laughs> pretending that the cowboy aesthetic is something that is in or out rather than just a fundamental part of American culture <laughs> that just like is always there. Okay. Like we, we did it with Casey Musgraves and oh, well, it's yeehaw summer. Then we did it with, you know, Cowboy Carter. Then before that, it was like the chick, like any, if you g- look up on the Wayback Machine, like <laughs> is cowboy trending? It is always trending. It is American <laughs> culture. <laughs> I no, I think you're completely right. I think it's insane. I think um, I love having this platform. I love having a podcast <laughs> where we just come on and like just complain. Like I love that we can just ca- sort of complain. Um, I am. I, I, yeah, I have to say, I am in a. I'm in a complaining mood. Well, I think that's. Luckily, we have all these beautiful, inspiring. I know. Calls I'm sorry. I'm will, sorry. I'm delaying our calls. Don't ever apologize. <laughs> um, I think. I just think. It's it's fine that you're in a complaining mood, and I think that it, okay. I think you'll pop out of it too. All right, great. All right, first call. Let's do it. Hey, Sam and George, this is Heidi, longtime listener, first time caller. Um, I just wanted to uh, jump in and ask you guys, um, since one of my favorite episodes is the episode with you and um, Matt and Bowen from Las Culturistas. I thought I would ask a question about that and that topic. Um, on that episode, you guys talked about awkwardness and randomness. So I am just wondering kind of how do you guys feel about the topic? Um, what is it, two years later? I feel like it's relevant. I feel like there's new, um, new nuances that are coming of age with, you know, awkwardness and randomness, things that are um, different than they once were. Um, and some, some things might still be the same. So I was just wondering if you guys could tell me a little bit more about that awkwardness and randomness. Um, love you guys so much. I'll be at your Chicago show. Ah! Catch me in the glamour girl hat. Woo! All right, bye. bye. Wow. Fun. Okay. Thanks, Heidi. What, what, yes. Thank you, Heidi. And thank you for such a thoughtful question because this is such a good thing to check in on two years later. One, it's kind of crazy that it's been two years. Um, I feel like our searing um, discussion on randomness and awkwardness is more relevant than ever. But I, I've i been thinking about this a lot recently, actually, because, mm-hmm. you know, we talk about Blurg, we talk about uh, I did a thing culture, and yeah. that does feel at this stage in time, like, it is gone. Like, people don't do it sincerely anymore people do do it ironically yeah and i'm like the fact that it's it's becoming you know how how people were saying yas queen sincerely then people were saying yas queen ironically and then even saying yas queen ironically died so, and slay saying slay ironically. slay ironically has almost died so hard that it's almost back <laughs> uh, no i actually i just want to say that there are certain things that feel defining in terms of my own aging and I think Slay dying a second time around, Slay ironically dying is one of them. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, I think I need to just kind of let go of this train and not follow trends anymore. Yeah. I I think what scares me about the present day is I don't know what the I did a thing is. I don't know what the this is. Like, yeah, I'm like a little bit like... It's skibbity, skibbity it, toilet. <laughs> but even like, I'm like... What am I going to step in? What am I going to say that because I won't be hyper aware of the the ways that people talk, like that will be the new thing that people will ironically do later? Like, will we be posting the 2025 version of like, I did a thing because we're like unself-aware now in a different 100%. way? I mean, if you don't think... <laughs> <laughs> if you don't think that the way our extended community of gay comedy podcasters talks is going to be the butt of every joke and maybe already is and we're not aware of it totally but like for the next five years like the the sort of like post lena dunham one extra layer of self-awareness but also like being aware of the concept of self-awareness like and 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 like talking openly about one's own neuroses, but but being careful, but then having a million uh, disclaimers about one's own privilege and one's own quirks, and being like, well, everything I'm saying, I'm, I don't really mean, but I sort of kind of mean it. Like, if you don't think that's going to be the butt of every joke uh, in the next generation of comedy, you are mistaken, my friend. Yeah. So it's. So I think where we're at now is we know that it's over, but we don't, we're scared of what's next. 
because yeah, we won't know I it. Do, yes, I do think in terms of, okay, I think awkwardness is more difficult to discuss. Randomness, I think, is, I think what we were talking about in terms of the TikTok trends, randomness it is back in a big way. And the and I think a big part of it is the beating the algorithm of it all. Yeah. Like, I think you actually just have to do something. It's sort of like the legacy of BuzzFeed cooking videos. It's like you have to do something random in order to get seen. Yeah. And it actually can't be that you're making a good point. It has to be random. Like, it has to almost look uncanny valley for people to be like, wait a minute, what is this? It reminds you me put, of, like, old YouTube. Like, Yes, exactly. It would be fun to see something edited crazy, and you would, like, laugh at it and be like, wow, this is funny. And mm-hmm. now that's even like transferred to TikTok. Yeah. Even, like, I like Kareem a lot, but even, like, Subway Takes is, like, okay, Say something random. Go, <laughs> and, then, and then because it's so because it's so unexpected, or because and sometimes people are like in on the joke, and sometimes they're not. And you are just you're se- he's setting everyone up for failure. <laughs> like it's just literally being like, okay, who are we sacrificing today? Go, and then you have to say something, and then it and then everyone just comes in and starts ripping you apart. Yeah, the comments in those videos are actually so 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 scary. Um. But shout out to Kareem. But he just had Jane Kareem. Goodall on, which I think is iconic. Wait, really? <laughs> yes. That's that sounds like a joke you would make. That's so I know it's funny. kind of insane. Um, so I do think randomness is very much in, and I think the reason is because of like structural issues with how social media works and the algorithms they're in. Okay, awkwardness. Do you have a theory? Like, I think uh, you know I, who is awkward. Yeah, JD Vance. Yeah. That's where awkwardness is coming in. I'm trying to think. There's no, like, weaponizing awkwardness like there was in the 2010s. Like, Right. Like, the, oh, 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 oh. yeah. Now yeah. you're, like, supposed to be normal when you're out in public. <laughs> no, I I agree. And I actually think that's a good development. Like, Me too. And I used to be someone who slightly weaponized awkwardness or, like, or also weaponized like, oh, I'm such a mess. Like, I'm dropping papers everywhere. Oh, of course I'm late again. And at some point that stopped being cute. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Because even awkwardness is like a cousin to like introvert conversations. Yes. And 100%. that stuff has kind of died down too. Where it's not, people aren't like strongly identifying as like, well, mm-hmm. I'm an introvert. So I can't do things. Yeah. Okay. That said, sorry, uh, we need to move on. But yeah. in so I also think the... Kamala uh, Kamala Harris pre actually being a presidential candidate her like the, all the memes about how she how uh you know she sort of like didn't make much sense and she was always laughing that is actually a brand of awkwardness and so I almost think there's like a continuum where one side is Kamala is, is like charming charismatic awkwardness and mm. one side is like conversation ending in cell adjacent awkwardness. <laughs> and I do think in a culture where everyone is so polished and ready to self brand, awkwardness can be powerful because it, it shows authenticity. So that's, well, I love that premise. You know what I mean? Stay awkward folks. Stay awkward. Okay. <laughs> Next call. Hi, my name's Paul and I'm calling from Baltimore, Maryland. Ooh. And Yes, Radio Lab is my favorite podcast, but the thing is, I'm straight. So, what's that all about? Wait. <laughs> First of all, A plus question. <laughs> Wait, I'm confused. <laughs> we're catching a flight to Baltimore, is what that's about. <laughs> because we're going to need to meet you in person, King. Yeah, this is going to take some some hands on studying. We've got to figure I do out what the say, deal is. I do want to say there are many straight male listeners and we have met them at shows and, and c- contacted them on the internet, et cetera. Yeah, that's true. It's not like that. It's not, it's not as rare as one would think. I know you all think you're, oh, we're such cool queers and girls. Not always. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do 
you know, I, I bravely listened to How Long Gone, so, um, you know, it does go both ways. <laughs> but I mean, kind of, but How Long Gone literally is queer baiting 101. <laughs> they, no. are, they are soliciting gay guys left and right. Damn, you're absolutely right. Are we straight baiting? What is, what? I do think we're straight baiting in a way. Like, I think both of us sometimes, uh, you know, I think both of us do get off on appealing to straight men in our own ways. Wow. Don't you think? Well, well, sexually, of course. Well, of course, sexually. <laughs> but I think you have your whole cowboy uh, baseball cap Midwestern thing. Uh-huh. And then I think I sort of, I like shooting the shit with, with the boyfriends and the husbands. Yeah, you do. You're good at that. Damn. I mean... Yeah, whatever. I guess it just means. I guess it's. It is weird to me that it's. Are we're your favorite podcast? Excuse me. It's not weird. You have, you have maybe check out Barstool Sports. <laughs> no, do not. <laughs> do not check out Barstool Sports. No, I don't think it's weird at all. I think it is perfectly normal, and I think it is probably like really healthy. I think you're by. <laughs> oh my god! Next call. I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, so I left an Instagram post on the Straight Hair Lab kind of like pre-wedding post where you photoshopped George into a bow tie. And I was just listening to the to the, the pause at the time and I was like, ah, ha, 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 oh my God, like, uh, tux as like, not tacky, that's hilarious. And I posted it in the comment and then that evening I was like, oh fuck, what if he's actually wearing a tux for the wedding? That's so mean, I can't believe it. And I went and deleted it and left this stupid other comment being like, oh, he looks lovely. Of course, he wasn't in that tux. Anyway, why do you think tuxes are not tacky? What gave you um, that belief? And in a related note, who is your favorite British person? And um, yeah, how do you like feel about James Bond? Is there some of that? Like, is he there? Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Love you very much. Thank you for giving me life. Wow. Okay, first of all, I just wanted to play that so that we could listen to that person's stunning, beautiful voice. I know. That was nice. Um, <laughs> and from what I understand, the questions are, A, are tuxes tacky? Why or why not? <laughs> B, who is our favorite British person? And also thoughts on James Bond? <laughs> Okay, well, um, I'm going to go with favorite British person first, and it's got to be Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to go across nice. the pond and meet him one day. Uh huh. Um, how about you? Oh, I don't know. This is so hard. Yeah. Don't you th- like, I really want to. No, have- you know who actually I love yeah. um, both <laughs> Graham Norton and the other guy when they are hosting drag or guest judging on drag race i'm always like damn i love these guys yeah what's the other one's name suit alan carr yeah no i love well is that his name yeah it is his name but the thing with alan carr is that he he (laughs) has gone a bit anti-cancel culture in recent years oh really in a way that you don't want to look into (laughs) but yes we love vintage alan carr baby (laughs) um okay here is one of my favorite british people and not to be earnest but the director, Mike Lee, is so huge for me. Um, and I, he, I, I've been, uh, I think I've mentioned this a little bit on the podcast, but I've been on a real Mike Lee kick recently and I'm trying to watch his entire filmography. But he also has this taped play that, that is very popular. It's called Abigail's Party. And it is basically like a, it, it is, the absolute dream, which is a comedy about a party going south, where it's like people are like waiting for the guests to come, then the guests come, and then slowly everything devolves into chaos. And it's like, uh, it's, you know, as with everything British, it is commentary on class and on a sort of uh, post Thatcher uh, London. And it is just absolute heaven. And then the other British person I love, not to always be thinking in an uh, internet meme way, is Miriam Margulies. Oh, yeah. No, she's great. I mean, sh- now that is an iconic queen. <laughs> now that is a British person. <laughs> and you know I love me, all my dames. You know I love Judy Dench and Maggie Smith. Yeah, I love the girls. What about British musicians? Like Charlie? Like the Gallagher brothers? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love Charlie. My favorite British person is Charlie XCX. <laughs> That's honestly probably true. That's the one I spend the most yeah. time with, you know, their art. Yeah. 
Um, Mine is Jessie Ware, except for her foreign policy opinions. <laughs> yeah. Amazing live show, though. Shout out to Jessie. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, <laughs> um, I, I love Sonique. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. Love and feel so good. Yeah. And that's what keeps me high. Yeah, no, I love her. She needs a, yeah, she needs to get Oh my god, here. Dido. Hello. <gasps> <laughs> Damn, British people have all the fun people. I love Dido the Beatles, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Craig. Oh, Dan- Daniel Vice. Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe is so good. I saw him on stage recently. He's awesome. Um Sir Ian McKellen. Yeah, Adele. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do we think of James Bond? Um, I'm always underwhelmed. I'm like, why do they make these movies so damn boring? I feel like if it, like, okay, so there's like a hot, horny man mm-hmm. who solves mysteries or whatever. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is perfect for me. I'm in heaven. Sure. And every time I watch one, I'm like, what is all this filler? Why, why, how did you make this boring? Have you, which ones are you thinking of? Like the most recent ones? I'm thinking of the most recent ones. I mean, I loved um, like Casino Royale, like yeah. the first Daniel Craig one. But then like all the other ones, even like Skyfall, when people were like absolutely gagging for it i was like this movie sucks i hated it so i really grew up with james bond it was for whatever reason like a huge favorite among many people in my family like my grandmother would be like oh there's a james bond on tonight (laughs) (laughs) on the television um so i do have a special connection to him and i gotta say i think i'm much more pro than you are i'm like i don't keep up with them but if a new one is out and someone's like, do you want to go see it? I'm like, oh, yeah, Girls Night. We're going to see James Bond. <laughs> I also love the mythology of the Bond girls. I love the mythology of how it's always a different actor and the politics of that. And how it's like, oh, it was, you know, Sean Connery brought a different energy to it than, uh, you know, Pierce Brosnan and, and whatever else. And I also appreciate it as a British export. Like, there's a certain way that it's like... Uh, an avenue for popularizing a certain kind of British humor and British camp yeah. that I like. And even though I do like the Daniel Craig ones, I do find that they lack some of the humor of the previous ones in a way I don't always appreciate. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, yeah. And I think part of the reason I'm anti is because, like, they're one of those things that you are told to like when you're a child. Yes. And and so all my life I was like, okay, I think I like James Bond. I like James Bond. I like James Bond. And then there was a point where I was like, wait, I just was told I was supposed to at some point and I just internalized that. Yeah. Now that I have, you know, choice and freedom, I'm like, do I even like this? And I think the answer is like a, it depends. Like if it's good. No, I get it. Yeah, but Yeah. I get it. Wait, sorry, final thing. I love the I'm talking about like the mythology of it all. I love the Bond songs. Like how it's always a big deal who's chosen to do the song. And then how in the openings it's always just like a bunch of nude figures of women on fire. Yeah. It's you gotta fun. love it. You gotta love it. Um And are tuxes tacky or not? I think no. I think the only reason they're tacky is they're like such a like wealth symbol. Yeah. So Matthew said something recently that really blew my mind about tuxes, which is I was like, you know, I have my Joe's pub show coming up and I want to do something special for it. And I was like, what if, you know, I bought a tux for his sister's wedding and I haven't worn it since. I was like, what if as a sort of joke, I wore a tux and Matthew was like, he goes, I just think wearing a tux is the same thing as wearing a tuxedo t-shirt. And I was like, oh my God, that is one of the most genius things I've ever heard. That is so genius. The signifier of tux is so strong that no matter how good or bad or sophisticated the actual tux is, you are wearing a tux t-shirt. Wow. Unless it's like a car- like Ike does his show in a tux. Yes. And but he like it's but, like it imbo- in a but he has sort to embody of. the yeah. character. Yes. Well, but and I would say that is commenting on the tux t-shirt. Totally. Totally. That's so interesting. Yeah. But that really blew my That's mind. That's a really smart point. Okay, next call. <laughs> Hi George and Sam. Um because of this earnestness bonanza and because you are two sweetie pie cancers, I'm just curious, when was the last time you cried? Thank you. Mm. Do you want me to go first? Because mine's easy. Yeah, I have to think. So this is a cop out, but the last time I cried was when I was writing my vows before my wedding. And I cried, I cried while writing them, then every single time I rehearsed them. And then when it was actually time 
And I cried while like reading them silently right before walking down the aisle. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be a disaster. I'm going to be like bawling my eyes out or it's going to look contrived or whatever. And then when it was time to actually say them, I was completely dry. (laughs) So much so that I was like, does this come across as inauthentic? Like, do people think I don't feel these? And I don't, I guess what it was is just that like the mix of adrenaline and whatever else my body was producing was just so strong that it wasn't allowing me to actually produce tears. Mm -hmm. But I was very confused by it because literally every time I tried to read them, I would cry like violently. And then when it came down to it, I was literally fine. (laughs) That's so funny. Uh, Yeah, I did. I teared up at your wedding. I don't know if it counts, but I did tear up. I, and I, I think the last like sort of ugly, like, 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 almost like vomiting cry was like I was driving to work one day and it was like the Thursday before I was going back to New York to pack everything up. Mm -hmm. And I was just like a, some song came on and I just like could not stop crying. And I was like, Oh, ugh, it hurt. Yeah. That whole weekend I was like, that was the the moving weekend. I, Oh, when it wells, it really is like throwing up. Like it like wells up and you're like, I think I have to do this right now. Um, (laughs) I, yeah, when we finished packing the apartment, I was also like really, uh, bawling my damn eyes out. Um, damn, I'm like, I was looking through my recently watched movies to see what movie made me cry. And I, I legitimately can't find one. I mean, I'm now all the way back to Madam Webb. (laughs) Well, needless to say we were bawling. (laughs) Of course. Oh, okay. I mean, this is embarrassing, but I do think all of us strangers made me cry. That was January uh, 2024. Jesus. Whoa. Um, oh, and this German movie, A Fire, really made me cry. Mm. And I have to absolutely go ahead and smash that recommendation button <laughs> for the movie, A Fire. I repeat, A Fire. Run, don't walk. And it is German, right? Yeah, it's German. Okay, next call. Next, next call. George, Sam. Hi. George, congrats on getting gay married. So <laughs> special, so sweet, so cool, etc. I'm calling for a related reason, but here's a silly little twist. As of last year, I'm gay divorced. That's right. Um, we were together for eight years, married for five. We finished our PhDs together and got faculty jobs at the same university. Brilliant move on our part. It turns out, although not ideal, it's mostly fine working down the hall from your literal ex-husband. Anyways, my question isn't about him. It's about dating. Also, I'm 36, if that's helpful. I'm dating again, which has been a real LOL. But how do I kick divorcee out of my personality? Because unfortunately, it feels very top of mind, especially when someone is getting to know me, asking about my life, you know, the usual hinge chat turned first date convo. But like saying the word divorced on a first date, kind of weird, no? Or is it hot, but like in a fucked up way? I don't know. It feels equally as strange to bring it up as it does to not bring it up. And the reception of this information is usually a mix of intrigue and seemingly genuine compassion with a sprinkle of tell me everything about your failed marriage, you dumb faggot. (laughs) Thoughts on this? Did I wait a certain amount of time before mentioning? Do you think I'm getting an automatic demerit when I do mention? Or is the demerit for simply getting divorced in and of itself? Sincerely, a gay divorcee. Not the word divorcee is so funny. Wow. I'm sorry, but the... Oh, are they still giving out MacArthur Genius Grants? <laughs> or was it just Justin Vivian Bond this year? Because I have a nominee I am ready to submit. No, that was weird. I was like, wait, is this a podcast? Like, I was like, wait, you're doing what we do. It's, first of all, it was perfectly articulated. And then the additional aside at the end, like after the call is over, being like, ugh, that word. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was really okay. well produced. Yes. I would say. Okay, your thoughts. I mean, you can't hide from it, obviously. I think, and it's better to be just like, yeah, I'm divorced. And I, it's going to be juicy. Like, that's okay, though. People are going to, it's fun to have something juicy. Um, and I think you should uh, lean into it and, of course, fetishize it. Totally. I have to say, this is a, a boring response, but I genuinely mean this when I say, To me, it would make no difference if I was dating and someone was 36 years old and divorced. Like, I I think it, of course, is slightly more complicated if you have um, 
kids or, or if you're like still living with your ex or something like that. But like a gay guy who's 36 and divorced, like, yeah, we all have exes. Yeah, it sounds really it, normal to me. I think. Sorry to. I'm trying to think what would be like, to, to for example, if you, you were. If you were 21 and gay divorced, I would maybe be like a little more like, what's going on there? Why did you feel the need to get married at 19? But I really, I get what you're saying about it being hot, but I almost think it's so normal that it's barely fetishizable. No, that's really true. I really would not worry about it one second. Yeah. And you don't need to like say a bunch about it. Just be like, yeah, "Yeah, we were married and now we're divorced. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of a cool thing where people will be like, and by the Ooh. way, you're an academic too, an a-, a gay divorce academic. That is so That's classic. Hot. That is so classic. Hello, paging Woody Allen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Love that. Hi, Sam and George. This is Katie. I'm calling on behalf of all the elves in the LGBTQ plus. Um, I've always appreciated your reverence that you guys have for lesbians, and I just want to hear you talk about them more. George, I know you have, like, a lot of lesbian friends. Um, Sam, why don't you? (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I actually don't know if that's true. Um, But, yeah, what do you think about, I don't know, the relationship between gay men and lesbians? Is that gay or straight? Um, Yeah, that's it. Illy so much bye okay sam has lesbian friends <laughs> everyone needs to stop accusing him of not having lesbian friends <laughs> that was so funny though um it was really funny yeah, i do like the question is the relationship between gay men and lesbians gay or straight that's a really <laughs> that interesting like, question yeah what do you think i think it's i think it's i'm gonna go gay M- me too it's a classic I mean, it's classic reaching across the aisle. It is classic being in community with those that are different from you. There's something so beautiful about like essentially having something in common that actually makes you more different. It's like the commonality is the same sex attraction, but it co- <laughs> but it actually, but in fact, gay men have more in common with straight women like 100%. because they both like men. Like, yeah. It is, a, it is a level of solidarity you have to develop that actually takes some intellectual uh work and it's funny too there's like there are cultural differences of course yeah and you have to be like like sometimes when you're like well gay you know insert gay joke here um about our culture and then sort of like well does that apply like there's something where you have to be like there's like a translating element yeah um, and vice versa i also think I want to work on a theory that's like first order gay stereotypes and second order gay stereotypes Mm. and the same for lesbians. Because I think the first order of gay male stereotypes, let's say, are, okay, what are they? It's like obsessed with sex, Mm -hmm. like loves Britney Spears, fashion, like whatever. And then the second order is like, for example, a very specific kind of neuroticism. It is... um, uh, body dysmorphia, a deep sadness, it, it, a deep sadness. It's like sort of a using your own like intellect and literacy as a defense mechanism, you know, and mm-hmm. those second order stereotypes are actually so interesting. And I think what often happens is that gay men know the first order lesbian stereotypes, which are, you know, cargo pants subaru subaru um being handy like building things uh-huh. uh lesbian bed death all these things and they you know dumb gay guys will see that and then it will like make them almost homophobic towards lesbians and it will turn them off from lesbians but if but all the second order lesbian stereotypes are actually are are like you know, an attention to community, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. being sober curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, potluck culture. Potluck culture. <laughs> and all of that we have so much to learn from. So I think there's a, there's historically been a laziness on the part of gay guys. And I think a lot of this is very much portrayed in media like Will and Grace, where like when lesbians exist in Will and Grace, it's always as a punchline. Mm-hmm. And I think once we go into the second order stereotypes, we can have some real conversations. Have I told you my theory that New York is gay guy town and L.A. is lesbian town? 
I'm 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually like, it's so interesting where I'm like, oh, this is like a habitat where lesbians <laughs> thrive. And New York is like yeah. a place where gay guys think they run the literal government. Like, yes. it is such a, an interesting difference. It, and it's like, oh, oh, even the most straight, blonde, yoga going chica in LA actually is deep down a lesbian. Yeah. It's it's an it's a lesbian town. It's a lesbian town. It's a lesbian town and you're lucky to be living in it. <laughs> wow, that was really good. That was good. Okay. Um oh this is fun. Hi. Last Christmas I saw George in line for um the Kiki and Herb show. And my question is whether he prefers Kiki and Herb or Justin Vivian Bond. And my second question is, are there any other New York traditions that you both like doing? Uh, maybe like going to Kiki and Herb every year. So the part that I thought would be fun is, are there New York traditions we both like? I do want to say this was submitted before Justin Vivian Bond won a MacArthur Genius Grant. <laughs> so shout out. <laughs> wow. Really ahead of the curve. Um, mine aren't like... I'm trying to think like I I've only done this once and I've probably talked about it on the podcast already, but I went to the, uh, and I, okay. So I was listening to WTF with Mark Marin shout out and, um, um, Sigourney Weaver was on. That's why I was listening. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and she was talking about the train show in the New York Botanical Gardens that they do yes. for Christmas. And she is like on the board or something. And she was like, it's actually so fun and I love it and I go every year. And I was like, this actually sounds really up my alley. And I went to the train show in the New York Botanical Gardens and I had the best day of my entire life. It was like, they make like replicas of New York City with like little twigs and and like pine things and then little trains go through it. I I was like genuinely <laughs> like moved. I was like, this is yeah. so cute and fun. Um, and so actually last year when I got this job and I had to come out here very quickly, like the thing I was, I was like so sad because it was in December and I was like, but I haven't gotten to go to the train show yet. <laughs> and I'm still like, I, I, you know, I, we're going to Misha's parents for Christmas and they're in upstate New York. And I'm like, maybe there's a way we can <laughs> swing by and I can get closure and go to the train show. <laughs> Um, Damn. Yeah. I love that. Um, well, I do actually like going to Kiki and Herb every year. I mean, they hadn't done it in a very long time until a couple of years ago. But then since then, I've gone every year. Um, I do really like going to Matt Rogers' show. Oh, yeah. I think it's so much fun. And I know all the songs at this point. Um, I like going to Lincoln Center as much as possible, whether that means going to a movie there or going to... Well, I was about to say the ballet, but I honestly have not been to the ballet. But I have been doing opera there around this time, and it feels very festive. Um, I do, not to be the most basic bitch on earth, but I do try to go see the tree at Rockefeller Center at least one day <laughs> during the holiday season. That's funny. Um, you know, the Rockefeller um, restaurant scene has been updated and Jenna Lyons was famously a consultant on the, on the big, uh, uh, on the big revamp. I didn't know this. So we have her to thank <laughs> my favorite <laughs> restaurant of all of those, or one of my favorites is Lodi, which is sort of like across from there. And it's very fun to go to and have a little martini. Um, and. Oh God, God, I miss New York. I know. Well, okay, here's something that is not good, and yet every year I still go. It's so flop, which is the Union Square Christmas Market. It's so flop. It's it, so flop, but every year I'm like, oh, but it's fun. Like, there's lights everywhere, and maybe I'll buy a little something, you know, a little Christmas ornament, and it's always flop. It sucks. It puts me in a horrible mood. I can't go yeah. to that. Um, well, that was sweet. That was sweet. Okay. Hey, so I have a question. Um, as a gay, I definitely have a close friends group on Instagram, and it's mostly thought pics. Um, what do straight people have on their close friends? Because I keep having straight friends ask me if they can be on my close friends, and they're definitely not trying to see my ass. So what do you think that they have? 
Alrighty. Thanks so much. Bye. This is an amazing question. Yeah. This is difficult um, because I have no idea. The only, do you have an answer? Yeah, it is baby picks. It is food picks. Oh. It is recommend dentist recommendations, dermatologist recommendations. It's a space uh, to be like basic and boring. Yeah. What I don't get is like, what I've never understood is mm -hmm. the point of a close friends if you're like a normal person. Like, yes, if you have like a hundred thousand followers, like sure, you'd yeah. like need a place to actually post for your friends. But if you have like four hundred followers, it's like just post where can I get a dentist around here? No, because you your mother in law could be following you, your coworkers could be following you. Well, they you can know that you need a dentist. Okay, here's another one. I, I think even just like going out footage. I think let's say you work in a more buttoned up environment, but you're going to the sweat tour. You don't want, you know, Marla from accounting to see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so maybe that is something a little more. And I also think sometimes people just, it's a almost like an alternative to a group chat. Like they just want something that's for like seven people. Yeah, no, that's true. Well, I wish they would just post um, their own ass pics. And, I agree. And, and then live out loud for once. I also want to say, okay, <laughs> I want to say I should be able, there should be a menu and I should be able to opt in to people's close friends. They can accept me if they want, but like, I know there are people out there who just haven't thought of adding me. <laughs> I 100% agree. I should agree. be in them. Uh, it's also like... It's very, the politics of a close friends actually makes me so uncomfortable. And totally. I like weekly panic and be like, wait, do I add these people? Do I take out these people? Like are like friends upset that they're not on my close friends because I only use it to post underwear pics or are yeah. they like happy that they're not? I'm like, this is, I don't want them to like have their feelings hurt, but it's mm -hmm. confusing. One of the most iconic uh, moments that we've had with our dear friend, Max Wittert is when he said something about someone's close friends and then I was like, oh, I'm not on it. And then he just goes, yeah, he probably doesn't want to fuck you. And then I was like <laughs> I in a bad mood this. that day and truly got offended and wouldn't speak to him for like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> oh, God, that's good. Okay. Hello. Oh, my God. This is so exciting. I definitely uh, called a first time and hung up because I got nervous. So this is my second time. Um, try again. Hi, my name is London. Long time listener, a uh, part time lover, and I have two questions for you guys, two kind of like surface level appetizer questions. Um, so the first one, I recently just started my first full time job as a choir teacher, and I have a really long commute. And you guys only come out with one episode a week and approximately two Patreon episodes a month. So I need more things to listen to in the car. So what are your like artists and album and music recommendations right now? What are you guys listening to, new or old? It doesn't matter. Uh, and then the second question is, I've recently been kind of addicted to making and eating soup. And so I want to know what is your relationship to soup? you eat a lot of it? Do you make it? Do you eat it out of the can? Did you eat it growing up? What's your favorite kind? Um, okay, that's all I got. Love you guys in a very cool and normal way. Please come to Kansas City. I'm desperate. You will guaranteed have one cool straight girl and her boyfriend in the audience. Okay, thank you, bye. Okay, Woo. first of all, that call, I'm like, I'm in the holiday mood somehow. No, I'm actually, the, the, it's so comforting to hear people's voices. Yeah, like the openness and excitement and I, it just like really warmed my heart in a way that I was not expecting. Yeah, that was nice. Um, and in fact, I was like, wait, George, we should do a show in Kansas City. Like there was something yeah, about it where I was like, no, we have to. Um, uh, um, okay. First of all, I fucking hate soup. <laughs> Whoa, really? Soup pisses me off. What about stew? I love a stew. Oh, interesting. So you just don't like something overly watery. Oh, I, I don't want a drink. I want a, a meal. You hate a cream-based soup, like a butternut squash creamy soup? That's the either? closest I can get. But it, you What know. about a French onion soup? 
Um, I don't know if I've ever had it, actually. Oh, my God, Sam, you would love it. <laughs> it's just onions and cheese, mama. <laughs> How do you feel about soup? I like soup. <laughs> soup is one of those things, almost like sandwiches, where people get so into them that you're like, oh, I like I like them in a normal way. <laughs> like, like, I do like soup, but it's not like I'm great. Like, as soon as the temperature hits a certain uh, temperature, I'm like, oh God, like I'm coming because I'm thinking about soup. Yeah. Um, in terms of my favorite soup, also, I have to say, I love having a soup as a course in a dinner. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I like when it's like I, a little side thing. Yeah. And I also, frankly, like little... This is actually a disagreement we had with Alice, or I had with Alice and Roman when she was on because she hates soup as part of a dinner party. But I'm like... A little shot glass with a little amuse bouche. That, to me, is 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 partying. I love your shot glass of soup idea. I think it's amazing. Do um, you like gazpacho? No, I ultimately don't really either. I'm always like, this, this is like almost salsa, but not. Well, it's also like put some vodka in it. Let's get a bloody mary. Yeah, I I, I don't like it, and I wish I did. Like it. It seems like something I would like, but I don't like it. Yeah. Um, I want to say, you know, if uh, anyone out there wants a soup recommendation, there's a Greek soup called avgolemono, which is a uh, chick, very lemony chicken soup that often has rice in it as well. Mm. So you can look that up. Um, what was the first part of the question again? It's just like what music we're listening to. And I have oh. to say, I'm just going to be completely honest here. I... I'm not in a huge music discovery phase right now. So, Sam, I'm going to let you take charge. Well, I'm in a similar position as this caller where I'm commuting. I'm finding myself commuting more and needing things to listen to. And it is complicated. I'm I'm in a way I'm like more open. I, I'm sort of in a music exploration phase and mm-hmm. um, in a way that is like confusing, I, I, like I'm not like going back and like being like, let's listen to the discography of, I don't know why I keep referencing. I'm like Bob Dylan. Like, I'm like, no, I'm like, for some reason I'm like, Oh, what's that Tovlo album that I never listened to from approximately three years ago. Like, (laughs) and I'll like, listen to that. I'm trying to like fill in (laughs) like weird gaps. I've also, you know, I'm more open to different podcasts, but it's hard to, cause you really have to like fall in love with the host. And if you don't like get along with them in, in your mind, it's like, a bad mixture. I I have to say I've been I've been uh, not prioritizing music and one of my maybe it's too early to make new year's resolutions but one of my resolutions I think is to see more live music because it used to be mm. such a huge part of my life and I don't go to shows anymore. That's a good goal. Um, I recently discovered that Chica that everyone likes um uh uh N- Nilufer Yanya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I saying that right? No, you. I don't know. But this is yeah. funny because people have been talking about her and I have not listened to the album yet. But I saw her on a billboard in uh-huh. LA and the name, like I forgot if like Misha and I had taken an edible or something, but we just kept saying like Nilufer Yanya, like <laughs> over and <laughs> over again. <laughs> and um, so I'm, uh, it's funny that she makes, she's like a real person that makes good music. Yeah. And then the other person that, I'm having Chapel Roan syndrome, which is when Chapel Roan first, when that album first came out and I suddenly realized every single person I know has been ro- seemingly rooting for this girl for 10 years yeah. and I had never heard of her. And I'm having that effect with Liam Bensvi. Who's that? When I tell you every single person we know has been like posting up a storm about how incredible Liam Bensvi is, to be clear, I have not press play on any of this music and and i'm sure i would like it because i have similar taste to these people but i'm like where is everyone finding like i think i need to switch up my media consumption when it comes to music i'm not finding the right things yeah i I, yeah it's tough it's a tough journey i also want to say um like i mentioned the this christopher owens uh, Mm -hmm. the lead singer of girls who makes solo music now um the person someone who does this pr reached out and sent me his album early and and i'm loving it oh my god i love that um and then uh 
I'm I'm I think part of my journey also is it's because LA doesn't have seasons, I'm yeah. like trying to invent fall. Like right now I am like listening to Boney Vare and being like, mm. let's like create fall. I need yeah. to feel I need to fake it a little bit. Like listening to like Sufjan albums, listening to I'm trying to like invent a mood. Yeah. Um I've been listening to a lot of the Cranberries and literally really? just pressing play on just like their Spotify channel and being like, take me away. <laughs> That's fun. Oh, I but, have to say, did you listen to the Gaga Harlequin album at all? No, I can't. <laughs> I, no, I'm not, I'm not advocating for it at all, but I hit play for like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. and it, I am curious. It was making me LOL. I was like, this is the funniest thing I've ever heard. Because it's just like yeah, you yeah. got into a studio and you <laughs> you did this. Like, yeah. you know how when sometimes we're doing a podcast and someone has to, like, hit record and we're, like, a little bit embarrassed at the things that we say while, yeah. like, a, someone is just listening to us? And I'm like, I, how did she not feel shame <laughs> when, like, someone so, had to hit record? Here's something that's interesting about Joker. I sort of expected it to either be a huge hit or, like, a massive flop. And there's something happening where I actually think, in a shocking twist... It just is down the middle. Like, it's sort of like, oh, this is awkward. Moving on. It's just boring. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Even the album, you would not call it a flop. You would just call it like, it it doesn't exist. It's like when Beyonce did the Lion King album. Yeah. That doesn't doesn't count as part of her discography. Yeah. It's really bizarre. Okay. Next question. Oh, my God. How cool to talk to you directly. Hi, gay guys. Um, This is gay girl Amy from San Francisco. I can't remember what I'm supposed to say on this, but I do think you're right when you talk about how the Patreon is better than the podcast, although both are wonderful. And um, I'm wondering if you should just go straight to friends chatting. Bye. I appreciate you. Okay. I thought this was juicy. What was the question? Not to be. The question was like, she's like, should we go should the podcast become friends just chatting and should we abandon the guest format and the straight topic format? (laughs) Oh, which obviously we're not doing that, but (laughs) it is like, it's something I think about. Like we do these Patreon episodes that is, that are just us talking. And then often at the end, we're so happy to have gabbed for an hour and a half. Yeah. Well, this is an interesting in the real episodes, I really value humor <laughs> yes, <laughs> and trying yes. to find something funny and like do a bit. Um, and in the Patreon, we like don't necessarily uh, hunt for that laugh as hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and but in a way that you know, sometimes people like. Like, it's hard for me to to put value on it because I'm like, well, it's, I didn't try. I didn't think of anything. I was just chatting. It Some literally people... is not part of my comedy career. <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah. just me having a phone call with my friend Sam. <laughs> yeah. So it's confusing. Um, but yeah, sometimes we can do that. I think it's more comfortable because it, there's no pressure to it. Um, yeah. And I also would, I also want the podcast to be about something. Me too. I think there's enough podcasts out there that are just people chatting. Yeah. But, yeah. We go back and forth a lot about doing more episodes without guests. Yeah. Even just because it would make our lives easier because booking guests takes time. Yeah. Well, podcasting it, is one of the hardest jobs anyone can have. If not the hardest job. <laughs> Um, okay. Hi, Sam and George. Emily from Vermont calling in to plug the Discord and also ask a question. Uh, so if you had to pick another gay guy animal type, thinking otter, thinking bear, what animal would it be and what traits would it represent? Thank you. And I'm excited to be calling in. Bye. Hmm. That's an amazing question. I want to talk process. Okay. Go. <laughs> so there's two ways you could approach this. You could just think of a random animal and then justify it with the type of gay guy. Mm-hmm. But I really do want to think of the type of gay guy that has not yet been defined an animal. And I want to give them an animal. Okay. Um, here's something I'm thinking of. You know when people are like really like lanky and tall and like... Mm-hmm. Because they're not twinks, and they're not bears, and they're not otters. 
that needs something like that needs like josh and aaron kind of like josh and aaron like what would that like storks or like um storks <laughs> maybe they're storks yeah well because it's not flamingos, flamingos. yeah uh-huh. flamingos is something that flamingos it's like you're a ballet dancer yeah so storks storks okay but then it's like there's there's child rearing uh right exactly and also you know trash and aaron are hot they're not like some bird right so like slender man that's not slender an man <laughs> great <laughs> is there an animal like i'm almost like salamander like i'm like there's something tree trees you can what be a are twink those things in the Lord of the Rings? Ents. Ents. <laughs> oh, actually, Ents is just like tall gay guys. Yeah. Ents I don't think Josh and Aaron are Ents. I think you have to be uh, more, like, gigantic. Yeah. Okay. What animals? Here's like my... Snake? I, what I, no. <laughs> yeah, snake. <laughs> a cobra. A cobra. What I was going to say, this is not so much a physical appearance thing, but I do wish there was, I, I, I want like a term for the kind of gay guy who's like randomly everywhere and no one, I, I actually think it's the cockroach. <laughs> it's like, no matter how much you swat them away, they always pop back up. Yeah. And they're just like at somehow at every event and they're not like, this isn't someone, oh, everyone hate like it's not someone everyone hates. It's just someone people are neutral about and yet seemingly never sleeps and is out all the time and it's some it's always very it's always this like wait who is he with again yeah cockroach maybe even like termite there's something about like <laughs> yeah like where it's like well it's not gonna hurt you but it's like but i totally. don't really want it here yeah and it's okay. like should we do anything about it and it's like honestly not really like there's something <laughs> there's something yeah. to it okay okay not our best answer, but it well, is it's a, it is. you know, life is a work in progress. Yes. Um, okay. We are. Okay. Wait, let me play this iconic call that I want to end on. Okay. This one's big. Okay. I have two questions that are related. Um, the first is, is, is this problematic or am I problematic? And the second is what's going on with me Kind of cycling analytically from your perspective. So, to give this context, so I am a 30 something queer, lesbian ish woman. And I am married to a straight guy, very straight, this guy. But, um, first kind of serious straight relationship before that mostly with women and um i live in kind of a you know like a it's it's like bouldery um portlandy austin-y kind of city and i have two kids um and i have just come to terms with the fact that i am kind of obsessed with gay guys, um, I listen to a lot of podcasts with gay guys. I stand a lot of gay guys. I I think when I was younger, I used to want to date gay guys, and so I wondered, like, what's going on? Yes, like, I'm really in that. I am I like actually a trans guy who wants to be. A gay guy. Uh, I don't think so, though. I really like being a woman. I really like being married to my husband. But I kind of, yeah, I like, kind of feel like I stand gay guy culture and all the forms that it takes. So I'm wondering, what's going on? Is that problematic? Am I othering, exoticizing? Um, I'm not running the stop. <laughs> what needs to happen? Okay. Um, okay. I okay. mean, this is the biggest question of them all. This is like sort of a 
This is a big cultural question. First of all, I want to say you're not alone. There, This is like a thing that is happening right now that yes. is complicated, where women are standing gay guys in a huge way. And I know it's always kind of existed, but it's like in the way that gay guys stand pop stars, women are standing gay guys. There has been this influx of openly gay men in the culture. Some of them actual celebrities in pop culture. Some of them very niche um, creators and podcasters. <laughs> okay. Um, and that never existed before. Yeah. Like, or when it did, it was like one person that everyone was like, look at him, like George Michael. Like yeah. it, Elton it, John. It, it wasn't Elton John. It wasn't this community-based thing in the way that we have, for example, a bunch of different actresses and they are in movies together and and a bunch of pop stars and they collaborate. And oh, Beyonce is doing a song with Lady Gaga and Chapel is doing whatever. And so to me, the two most interesting things happening in terms of the it, relationship between women and gay men are a women standing gay men b gay men suddenly becoming interested in women sexually this is happening in a huge way i feel like it's funny to meet a woman <laughs> mm -hmm. right and say that <laughs> It's funny to meet a woman right now because I feel that there are certain women that I can feel them being the type that will be obsessed with gay guys. And yeah. you can almost feel them hungering for you to like be gay, which I know is like, this is not a new thing necessarily. Like Tyler Coates had the web series, My Disappointing Gay Best Friend, which is kind of exploring this. Um, but I, I do feel it more now than I did in the past. Um, and sometimes I do feel disappointing. Like sometimes I don't get me wrong. I can say a bitchy thing about, you know, Sabrina Carpenter yeah. or whatever. And they're like doing cartwheels for me. But, <laughs> but when I like, when, for example, I'm like a little tired that day and I can't like nail, like if, like if I'm like just going to get a water and someone's like, mm -hmm. what are you getting mama? And I'm like water. And they're like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like there is, I can see the disappointment. Yeah. Okay. Here's the other thing that has happened is that gay through quite frankly, things like drag race, things like, um, gay people on reality TV, uh, you know, gay mood, you know, whatever things that used to be like an inside joke or, a, a, an in-group language among people in the community are now out there. And so suddenly you know, random straight people feel compelled to talk about like bottoming and topping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that part is new or like the, the way people use the word twink is often very confusing to me. I agree. I agree. And it's, I almost think maybe what it is, is in the same way that gay guys have gone from, knowing first order lesbian stereotypes, second order lesbian stereotypes, suddenly straight people went from knowing first order gay stereotypes to second order gay stereotypes. And suddenly we're talking about topping and bottoming and muscle queens. And um, <laughs> yeah, like j even just like the, the way like gay guy open relationships and how that's now discussed and girls can be like, oh, yeah, my gay guy friends are always fucking. <laughs> yeah. I, and there, it's a double-edged sword because sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes you're like, I wish they didn't mm -hmm. know that. Um, totally. I I also have been feeling like because of this like obsession with gay guys from women, I feel like a a certain gay privilege that is sort of weird. Where I used to, you know, in like comedy, when you're in an open mic and you're gay, in in the year 2000. 13 it was like kind of a thing that it was like don't worry i'll show you that even though i'm gay i'm funny like yes. <laughs> and uh, like now it's very much like you meet people and you're like they just are like no we love you already because you're gay and it's like but that's <laughs> i didn't do it yet i didn't do anything i don't deserve it, it uh, there is yeah. just like a straight up privilege and that is weird yeah i also i do think gay men Going back to the days of, you know, having a gay BFF, gay men are just this like neutral identity for straight leaning women where they are not, they are, it's this person that they neither feel uh, 
like they're comparing themselves to or they're competitive in any way, nor do they feel sexually attracted to. And to be clear, it goes both ways. That's why gay men are so um, drawn to straight women, too. And that is almost why all the um, sort of more problematic parts of it are so covert because you, you're like, oh, what could go wrong? Like, there's nothing that could go wrong here. We can't say anything offensive to one another. We can't, um, you know, sexually harass one another. Nothing. Could, like, it's a perfect crime. <laughs> and, then, and then suddenly you'll say either gay men will say something insanely misogynistic or straight women will say something insanely homophobic. And you're like, oh, no, you ruined it. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. The obsession, the obsession. Yeah. With gay guys and straight girls, it's like, just fuck already. Mm. <laughs> but to this person's point, I really don't think you need to worry too much about your own identity and, and what it means for your own identity. I mean, no, you're fine. I, it's sort of like, it's like, it's like, guess what? If you like uh, pop culture from a certain uh, racial or ethnic group, you're not transracial. You're just, you just <laughs> enjoy jazz. <laughs> Mama. Um, yeah, that makes sense to me. So pop on heart stopper and yeah. live your life. But by the way, you are the backbone of the community and yep. there would be no podcasts if it weren't for you. <laughs> oh, uh, truly. All right. Um, I unfortunately have to run. I know. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick some other calls uh, and have them play after the credits as tributes to them, even if we don't have a chance to answer them. Okay. Well, thank you to everyone who called in. We really appreciate it. It was fun. And we're excited to see you in New York on Saturday. Yes. Come to the bell house on Saturday. Yeah. We can't wait to see you. Okay. And we love you. We Bye. love you. Bye. Hi, Sam and George. Uh, my name's Jake. I'm from Austin, Texas. I'm calling because I'm in a little bit of a conundrum. I identify as gay, and I love men. I think they're beautiful. My subconscious is constantly attracted to them, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but there's this one woman that I started working with, and for some reason, there's just this subconscious attraction to her that I have. I never really feel this with women. It's extremely rare. But with her, I just think she's the most beautiful woman in the world. I see, I stare into her eyes and I feel seen. There's just this magical energy when I interact with her. And this is usually exclusive to men that I meet. So I'm left a little bit confused. A part of me is thinking I am potentially bisexual or pansexual um, and that I should pursue this urge to get to know this beautiful woman better. Um, but a part of me is terrified to even attempt to think about that because I've always considered women as not a part of the dating field, and I have no idea how to even attempt to date a woman, flirt with a woman. It's it's a whole thing that I've never really even wa wanted to engage in, but now that I have this feeling to, it just feels way too newfound. It feels like like when I was gay and in the closet again, I'm like in the closet for women. And I don't know if I should just hide in the closet for this woman and pretend like it didn't happen for the sake of my own self identity and um, comfortability with what I know, or should I embrace this newfound bisexuality um, and try to get to know this lady better? The other thing is she is extremely beautiful. And in my honest opinion, probably way too beautiful for or even me if I was straight, um, or if she had any interest in me, I think I'd, I'm just not handsome enough for someone of her level. Um, that being said, obviously, that's insecurity talking and whatever else, but she really is just like on another league in terms of beauty, intelligence. She comes from wealth, all these things. So, like, I felt like even if I was a straight man, I probably would not have the courage to pursue her. Um so, yeah, my, I guess my question is, now that I have a newfound attraction to a woman that I know, should I pursue this bisexuality regardless of my insecurities about it or my lack of knowledge or comfort in it? Or should I just stifle it as if I was a gay closet man and pretend that my attraction to her doesn't exist and just stick with what I know? It's something that I've been curious about if I should if I should branch out into into women because again it's I'm like a nervous teenage boy that's never kissed well I mean I actually have kissed a woman but
Hi, George and Sam. Um, in the spirit of earnestness, I'm calling from Philadelphia to tell you that I am an old ass woman. I am 46 damn years old. Firmly Gen X, George, unlike you, who just is acts Gen X occasionally. Um, I don't know if it's because I have COVID right now and like my defenses have been brought down by this little virus, but I just wanted to call and tell you guys that, um, you guys make me so happy. I love your podcast. Sometimes I know it's Sunday night and Monday's coming, but I don't feel so bad because Tuesday will be a straight A lot episode. And I know that's super cheesy and not cool at all to say, but I mean, how could a 46 year old woman who's alive in, let's say, with me the 70s be cool? She can't, so it's fine. Um, but you guys just make me laugh so hard. And I'm a patronista and I wish I got the Discord a little better because I'm a little old. I mean, I just feel like it's not for me because I'm not that demo, but I like to read it sometimes. And you guys have just created a really nice community online. I'm actually a straight woman, too, which is embarrassing, but it is true. Um, But I just love you guys, and I want to say thank you for being fun and funny and open and honest and really just making me happy every time I listen to you. So, again, this could be the COVID talking, but it's also just me being earnest. Okay. I love you guys. You're the best. Thank you for your great podcast, and um, uh, that's it. Okay. Bye. Hi, gay guys. I was just listening to Patreon, and I heard the number, and I decided to call. It's the morning. I went to Madison Square Garden last night. I saw Charlie X. and and Troy Savant Sweat Tour. Charlie brought out Addison Ray and Lord. And when I tell you that I was sobbing, crying, screaming, shaking, squealing, laughing, all with delight, when these powerful women were on stage together, let me just tell you, it was amazing. It was life affirming. Feeling dehydrated this morning, but you guys are helping bring me back to life. And it's going to be a beautiful week. Bye. Um, hi, George and Sam. I'm a new subscriber, but a long-time listener. Um, or new subscriber to the Patreon, I guess I should say. And I just want to say that the episode, George recapping your wedding, did make me cry. <laughs> um, not only to just hear you talk about, like, the wedding and what it meant and the family and all of that, but also, like, the two of you talking about your friendship. Um, I think it was so beautiful. And I think it's been such a journey <laughs> the first episode. It's been so sweet to be a listener. And you guys are the best. And so I'm. my gift is being earnest to you that I feel very grateful and lucky that we get to listen to your guys' friendship every week. And love along.